All right, so to begin, I'm going to load up uh, some of the aspects of the program that we may need to work with. I'm going to load up the product model that has our validations in it. I'm going to load up the controller, which is the products controller. And this is where all of our CRUD tasks were. We've got our index, our show, our new and create pair, our edit and update pair, and our destroy. And then what we're going to be focusing on today is going to be the views in the product subfolder. And these are the four views that were associated with various aspects of our controller. There was the show view, the index view, the edit view, and the new view. And we're going to group the edit and the new together and the index and the show together. And so first we'll take a moment to look at some of the repetition that exists in these views and then we'll look at what we can do to remove that repetition. So there's going to be repetition that we're going to be able to see between index and show. So if I go back and forth between the two of them, remember that show is for showing a particular product and it has a section with an H3 that displays a product title and a paragraph that displays the product description. And the product in this case is an instance variable coming from our show action right here. And so that show, when we look at it inside of the actual store, is what we get to when we click the links on our individual products from the index. So this is the show. It's basically generating this bit of text here. In the index, in the index controller, we have access to a collection of products, which is an instance variable called at products. And in the index, we have a loop, which for every product in that collection displays a section with an H3 and a paragraph tag. And it has a little bit of extra, it has two links, uh, an edit and a delete link. So if we wanted to replicate that, if we wanted to say, bring that edit and delete link into not just the index, but also on the show. Right now, what we would have to do is we would have to add even more duplication to our code. We'd copy and paste that paragraph tag into the show. We would sort of fix up the uh, indentation. And then we have to make a slight modification because in here we have an at product variable Whereas in the index, we were looping, and so we only had access to a product variable. So to make it work here, I would change this product variable into at product and this variable into at product. And I've now enhanced this view, so it has the edit and delete, and it looks similar to this front thing. Any change I now want to make, any change that's similar to the one I just made, where I'm making a change to how a product looks in our system, it's going to have to be made in both the index and the show. They're basically the same, sort of what's here inside of this section here is the same thing as what's inside of this section here. A section with an H3 and two paragraph tags, a section with an H3 and two paragraph tags. The first shows a title, description, edit, delete, title, description, edit, delete, right? So there's a lot of repetition there. And so that's the repetition we're going to attack in terms of the index and the show page. There's also repetition that we can remove inside of the new and the edit. If I go back and forth between the new and the edit views here, what's changing? Just the H1. Like that's it. If I scroll down, you'll see that there's a little bit more that's different. So if I scroll down, I go back and forth. It's just the word create or update on this submit button that's changing. But everything else in this entire document is repetition. So what these two views do is they present to us forms, right? So if we go to our new product, that's what the new view presents to us. And notice it says create product there. And if I go to edit a form, this is what the edit view looks like. And it says update product. But it's basically the same thing. 
visually uh, from the web browser, except for one actually includes content about a particular product. But in the back end, it's identical. So this is where we're going to do our first actual refactoring here, because this one's going to be a little simpler than the edit and the show. We're going to try to remove that repetitive code and bring it into something called a partial. And when you think about partials, you can sort of think of them in terms of being um, like a, a method. So like what methods are to code, partials are to our views. They allow us to extract out repetition and then to make a call to that particular chunk of code uh, from multiple locations. So I'm going to create a new file inside of my app views products folder. And I'm going to name it underscore form.html.erb. And the only thing meaningful right now about this name is the underscore. Form is just I've chosen to call it that because that's what it's representing. It's going to have a form inside of it. But the underscore indicates to Rails that this is a partial. It's not a full view. It's a partial view that can be rendered from a full view. So I'm going to open that up inside of my editor. One thing about Rails is you're going to get very used to having many tabs open. So this is just the beginning of what you will see in a Rails project. You'll start to have lots and lots of tabs open. And I'm going to go to the edit and I'm going to take all of this code here from line three all the way to line 35 and I'm going to cut it and I'm going to paste it into this form. So there's 33 lines of code that I'm removing from this file and 33 lines of code that I'm removing from that file. Now both of my files are empty. That doesn't solve the problem yet. We have to have them reference this and basically render it. And so I don't have to do anything more to the form. It's got its contents as is required. From both the new and the edit, I have to tell them to render that partial in place. And I do that by saying, Render form, which is a shortcut for saying render the partial, oops, partial form. But I don't, because it's a shortcut, I can just say render form. And so this is telling uh, Rails to look in our current folder and look for an underscore form.html.erb. So basically it takes the word that you're rendering and looks for an underscore that word.html.erb and tries to render it out. And I can put this inside of both of my views, both the new and the edit. And so what I've done is I've effectively reduced the number of lines of code in my project by 33 because it, there used to be that same 33 replicated across these two files. And then I added two more lines for rendering. So my code is down 31 lines, which is great. And the complexity is solved because if you think about maintenance now, if I was to start adding columns to my products table in the database, every time I added a column, I would have to edit this form to allow the form to know about the new column so that they could be editable or sort of creatable as well. Prior to the partial, I would have had to make that change in both the new view and the edit view every time. Now, if I modify the product, I only ever have to make the change once. So it removes uh, the possibility of me so, you know, being um, sleepy one day and forgetting to make the change in two places and whatnot. So it sort of, it, it solves that human error problem slightly. We can now go back to my project and see if it's doing the correct thing. So we should be able to reload this edit page and have the edit still view. And we should be able to go back to the index and go to new. And this should still work. So if I, you know, if I add in my shoe phone, Call your friends from your shoe. It 
it works as well. So I, I've removed that repetition and it wasn't all that difficult. I created a partial, I gave it a name, I preceded it with an underscore, and then I rendered it by name from the two views in which I needed it. Any initial questions on that process? You can do this with like a header or something too, right? Yes, yes, you could definitely do it with a header. Um, and you can render that header you know, within views, or you can even render the header within the layout, the application layout file. And so it could be a nice way to sort of modularize that layout. Uh, one thing I see on a number of Rails projects is in the views folder, I'll often see a subfolder called uh, shared, in which you will put a number of partials that don't have to do with say like one of the models perhaps so they might not necessarily have to do with products but they're shared and they might be a menu they might be like a little um, footer or something like that and so you often have those for those though because they're in a separate subfolder you would have to uh, render them out with a path so if the form partial was in that shared folder you would say shared slash form and even though the file itself was still underscore form you never mention the underscore. You just path to it. Oh, it's in the shared folder. It's called form. And Rails knows now to look in the shared folder for an underscore form.html.erb. Okay, let's do one more refactoring, which is going to be the refactoring of the repetition in the index and show. And it's a little more difficult here because of the fact that the code is not perfectly identical. In the show, I have a section with an H3 and two paragraphs that all make reference to echoing out properties of an at partial, uh, sorry, an at product variable. In the index, I have the same thing, but the ERB echoes are all rendering out properties of a product, not an at product, but a product. So the variable is a little bit different. When it came to my form, I relied on the fact that both of these views had access to an instance variable called product. So the new and the edit, if we look at the controller, both the new and the edit make available to us an at product variable. And so what happens with partials is the partials inherit the instance variables of the views that render them. But here it's different. And so how do I deal with this difference? Well, what I'm going to do is I am going to create another partial file. But this time, the naming of the partial is going to become crucial to simplifying how this partial is going to work. And so instead of just calling it, um, you know, in this case, I just called it form. Instead of just calling it sort of like, the, you know, my product or something, I have to specifically call it product because that's the name of the object that's being displayed here. It's an object of type product. So I'm going to call it product. Oops. I want to rename this. Underscore product.html.erb. And I'll open this up. So in both cases, in this case here, we're looping through products, calling each one product. In this case here, we just have an add product. In both cases, they're an object of type product. And so I'm going to grab the code from the index, this whole section here, and I'm going to cut and I'm going to paste it inside of this partial, and I'm going to indent it or dedent it, and there we go. For each sort of rendering here, I'm going to now say, or so for each sort of loop through my products array, as I'm calling each thing product, I'm going to say render. And instead of when we did this and called the string, here I'm going to make use of the variable product. And what this is going to do is it's going to look for a partial of the same name and then it's going to make available within that partial a variable of the same name called product which will have the same contents of this variable so 
I'll now inside of here have access to a product variable that'll be the same as this product variable. I can do the same thing in show. In show I have this at product. I can get rid of this whole section and I can render out at product. The same thing's going to happen. It's going to look for a partial called product and within that partial called product it's going to make available a variable of the same name just called product alone not at product but product alone but it will have the same contents as this at product variable and so in both cases now I don't have to worry about the two different types of variables in both cases I end up with just a variable called product that can be used within this partial and now both of my views are simplified we're going to see in a moment that I can even simplify this index one even more, but we'll just look to make sure this thing is working. So the index looks like this. That looks, that looks like we want it to look. And if we go to the show for any one of these, it also looks like how we want it to look. In both cases, this is what's being rendered. I can simplify this. Rails is smart enough in this case to say, okay, you're rendering an individual product object. It goes to find the product partial and makes a product variable accessible. Rails is even clever enough that I can remove this whole loop and just tell it to render my collection of products. And because Rails knows that this is a collection of product objects, it will then by default look for a product partial and it will call this render statement over and over and over for every product in our collection and automatically load up that partial, which is great. That's like a really handy bit of magic that Rails provides for us. Oops. And so now look at how simple my views are. This view has uh, you know, an H1, a link, and render products. This one has render product and a link home, that's it and all of my information about how a product should be displayed is in one place and one place only. So I can make sure my index is still working. I can be happy with that. I can go to my command prompt. I can check my status. You know, I can check in on what the differences were. And when I'm satisfied, I can add that and commit it saying, uh, refactor to dry up my views, the indexed and show view along with the edit and new view were dried up using partials. And I can push that to GitHub. And that's really all I wanted to show you today. The ability to take repetition from what was already in our views and extract it out into separate files, files that we call uh, partials, and then sort of render out those partials from other views. While we're at it, I might as well show you what I was talking about a moment ago about sort of shared partials and maybe even using partials within your layout. So remember that in the layout document, this is where all views get injected uh, before the content sort of gets sent back to the end user. And so where this keyword yield is, is we have, um, that's where the views are going to be rendered. And right now we have this header here that's being displayed at the top of all of my layouts because it's in the layout file. This file can get out of hand quickly because you might have a, a lot of markup that's present on all of your pages. You might have a header, you might have a menu, you might have a complex footer, uh, you might have multiple menus like top menus and side menus. And so this, this file could get complicated very fast. So it might be nice to be able to extract some of this out into partials. So I might in my shared folder create a new file, which I call underscore header.html.erb. In this case, uh, header is not going to have any significance because it's not a tied to a, like a 
uh, active record object is just the name that I want to call my partial. And then I can take this header code out of my layout. I can put it into this file here. And then from my layout, I can have a render command. Where I can say render slash shared or shared slash header in its place. And then I can do that. Now, when my header really only had three lines of code in it, it wasn't that huge of a, of a cleanup. But you could imagine that I might have like a header and then a menu and then a footer. And just having these nice little uh, render commands in the layout, you know, if you've named them all appropriately, it, it makes sense. It even It's almost like added documentation for your markup. Oh, that's a header, that's a footer, that's a menu. And then you could have as complex of code as you wanted inside of your partials without having to sort of worry about sort of polluting the, uh, the application layout. So let's see that this is going to work. And there it is, if we view source, you can see there's that header and we can go onto any page within our system and that header's still there. It's coming to us by way of the application layout, but I've extracted it out into a partial in a separate folder and I've called it as such. It's in the shared folder, it's called header, and we can see it's found in the shared folder and it's actually called underscore header dot html dot erb. Any further questions on the use of partials to dry up your code? Oh, I thought of one other thing. Uh, sometimes it can be necessary to pass information to a partial. So if we think of them as method calls, often with methods, we want to be able to uh, pass arguments into our methods so that the methods sort of react differently. And one thing we may have noticed and that I actually sort of forgot to fix up was if we look at the edit, the edit correctly says update product. But if we look back at the new, it also says update product, which is not what we want. We want it to say something like create product. And so in older versions of Rails, that would have been a case where we would have had to pass in some content to the, uh, the partial to fix the problem. So what I'll do right now is I'll code it up as if I was working in an older version of Rails and I'll show you how to pass data in. And then I'll show you the fact that Rails has actually improved such that we don't actually need to do this anymore. So what we get when we render out a partial is we get the ability to pass in uh, arguments by way of something called the locals hash. And so I can do something like this. I can say, I'll do it the new style. I can say locals. And inside of my locals hash, any of the keys that I create are going to then be available as variables inside of the partial. So let's say I wanted to have some button text available inside of this partial. For the new page, let's say I want the button text to be create product. And if I copy and paste this into my edit, for the edit, I want it to be update product. And I have to just check to see if this is going to run on its own or if I have to do the long form where I specify the word partial. So let me just see here. Okay, it looks like it'll work. And then, so I've said for both of these, that locals button text is, and then each one of them is a slightly different. So this is like me passing in an argument. And then inside of the, the form itself, I can now just make use of that button text as if it were a variable, and it is. It's, it's been made into a variable. So I can say f.submit, and instead of having the hard-coded string update product, I can be using my button text. Ah, so this is it. I do, notice what it's saying here, undefined local variable or method button text. So it's like my, my local variables didn't actually work. And this is one of those cases where I get a little frustrated with Rails because Rails gives you the ability to do these shortened commands. But sometimes if you need to do more, the shortened commands won't work anymore. 
So for this to, for you to actually be able to use locals, you have to expand this out to the longer form command. Render the partial form with the local variables this. Same thing for here. Render the partial form for the local variables this. Now when I load my page, create product on the new. Update product on the edit. So I've, I've successfully passed in a local variable. So that's what we had to do in older versions of Rails. And that's also what you would have to do for any other instance where you might want some kind of local, uh, sort of localized ability to change your partial, to have your partial sort of change based on how it's been called. This whole idea though of the button text changing, it happens so often in Rails that we can actually leave our partial alone. We can go back to the short form of calling it. We can go back to the partial itself. Remember that this whole thing is a form builder. Form for product. That means this whole thing is aware of what it's building the form for. If we look at the controller, when it's a new, at product is a new blank product with no details in it yet. Everything's set to nil. When it's edit, it's gone to active record and it's found a product from my database. So it's a, it's a product object that has an ID, which is some numeric value and a bunch of, uh, bunch of actual uh, properties set on it. So Rails itself is aware of whether or not you're creating or editing, right? Because you're creating when the product object is blank and it has a nil ID and it's sort of a, a brand new object. And you're editing when the object itself has a bunch of data in it. So the form is actually aware of that as well. So when we go to the form partial here, this f variable comes to us by way of form 4. So f knows about the form. All we need to actually do is just say f.submit. And if it's a new object that we're building this form for, it's going to say create product because it knows even the object. So it knows the word product because that's the, the name of the object that we're working with here. And so if we're working with an existing object, it sees that it's an existing object and it knows it's an object of type product. So it will say update product. So if I go back here, reload my edit, it says update product. I didn't have to specify anything for the submit button at all. And if I go to products.new, it says create product. So that's just sort of the, the magic of Rails. Uh, this tends to happen in Rails when something is done sort of over and over. Someone will notice it and say, well, that's not so dry. We're making sort of all the programmers that use Rails do the same thing. Let's sort of optimize this process. And this is just one of those cases. So the, uh, the submit button just becomes aware of whether it's updating or creating. And so there, I think that's where I'll end this lecture on partials. Uh, we've seen two uses of them. One, which is this more generic use where we're, we're relying on an instance variable that we're inheriting from the edit and the new view. They both have that same at product instance variable. Some programmers are a little uncomfortable with this because it feels a little bit like global state and it sort of is. like. The, how did this at product variable get into the partial? You know, if it, we really were following the idea of this being like a method call, maybe it shouldn't be there. Uh, and that's, you could potentially um, even just use product without the at symbol and then pass it in as a local if you were really worried about the, of using global state. And then the other style of partial we used was the one where we worked on naming conventions. We passed an object to this partial when we rendered it and then within the partial it created for us an object of the same name as the par partial itself. So when we passed it an object it created a product variable and we could pass it not only plain old objects like this, this is like a, a singular object of type product, but we could pass it a collection of objects and it would render that partial over and over for each of the products in our collection. 
Okay, that's where I'm going to end today's screencast.